content warning, anti-Semitism, and just so much child abuse and sexual assault, just so much. I'm sorry. Before you flush your toilet, you really should make sure to put that lid down. If you don't, the swirling water creates a sort of mini hurricane. There's kind of a cool name for it, the toilet plume. Sounds like the best slide at the bathroom-themed water park. Now this toilet plume turns some of the particles in your toilet into tiny droplets and then aerosols them into the surrounding environment. Just little fecal particles floating around in your bathroom, coming to rest on your towels, on your toothbrush, or just hanging around in the air waiting to get inhaled by somebody. Fascist propaganda and Nazi ideology are actually a lot like human poop. They're ugly, harmful if swallowed, and the source of some disturbing fetishes. Usually, this kind of thing is kept underground where it can't harm people who aren't specifically looking for it. But a few years ago, there was a series of huge, uncovered Nazi toilet plumes that spread a lot of those shit particles all over the toothbrush bristles of society. I'm speaking, of course, about QAnon. That's the intro. I probably should have made a less disgusting metaphor to start this up. I, I, I had a whole thing written about Pandora's box, which is pretty much the same, except, you know, uh, maybe a bit more pretentious. Uh, anyway, we're going to stick with the toilet thing. It'll be fine. I know what you're thinking. It's okay, chill goblin. We did it. Q is no more. We voted QAnon out of office the right way. Q slogans are way down online, and people are seeing the error of their ways. People are taking down that where we go, when we go, all bumper sticker from the back of their truck and throwing up a good old-fashioned Biden-Harris 2021. We live in a post-conspiracy nation. Unfortunately, that's really not the case. Like it or not, QAnon has reshaped our world. To understand how, I think everyone could stand to improve their QAnon literacy. So first, let's learn about the QAnon propaganda structure. QAnon and you. My mom says there's a video of Hillary Clinton wearing a kid's face as a mask. Is that true? Oh, hello, I didn't see you there, Bobby. No, there's no video of Hillary Clinton wearing a kid face, and if there was, we'd all have seen it. Sounds like your dear old mom has fallen down the QAnon rabbit hole. Jeepers, mister, I hope she's okay. But what's the QAnon rabbit hole? Not to worry. You're probably a normal person who doesn't really know the whole structure of the QAnon phenomenon. That's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm going to explain to you how the whole thing works in just a few minutes. And when I'm through, you'll absolutely be a worse person for it. Ready, Timmy? It's Bobby, and, and gee whiz, I don't know if I want... Perfect. Now, Johnny, you were saying you've got a DMT dealer who spoke to Tom Hanks in a vision and uh, learned where the bones and bodies are buried. Those might seem like pretty unbelievable things. Well, it was my mom, and, and what's DMT? And where do these ideas come from? Now, these little sausages of ideology were manufactured in a little sausage factory called Aitkun. <gasps> now, most people who digest these conspiracies have never been inside where it all starts, because it's horrible in there and will scar you for life. Let's take a peek. Oh, okay. Wow, is this where QAnon started? <laughs> Not quite, Billy. Uh, QAnon did start out on 4chan, but eventually had to leave. Imagine being forced to leave 4chan. That's like being banned from Comic-Con for smelling like B.O. Anyway, for most of his career, Q posted on his own board on 8 Coon, claiming to be a Trump White House insider revealing insider info. Q will post long, cryptic, borderline incomprehensible Q drops, saying things like, where we go one, we go all, drops will go fast, White House clean special interest group, 
marker. Everything is planned. Years. Message. Unity. Awakening. We fight. Lexington. Concord. Stay together. Q. Well, what does that mean? Whatever you want it to mean, Jasper, my boy. These are sometimes referred to as breadcrumbs. Now, people in the thread examine these breadcrumbs, combining cues, subway newspaper horoscope tier messages with real-life events, conspiracy theories. They do a little bit of math. It's kind of cute. Whatever else they can do to make sense out of them, the people who are the best at assembling the breadcrumbs are called bakers because that is how bread is made. No, that's not how bread is made. No, it's not, is it? Well, then I guess this isn't what? my lunch. <laughs> You'll learn all about how to make bread when you get a little older, Tobias. Okay. Anyway, this part of the process works kind of like a TV show fan theory forum. Like, you ever read through uh, Pokemon fan theories and at first you're like, well, these people clearly have way too much time on their hands. And then you find one that's just got so much evidence for it. And it just seems to just keep stacking up and up and up to the point where you just kind of have to admit that Ash's dad is probably JFK Jr. <laughs> you know what I mean? JFK Jr.? Uh, I think so. Well... That's precisely what happens on the Q research board. Q posts something, then hundreds of people pick it apart, give their theories. The bakers assemble the best ideas into bread. Now you got yourself a product that's ready to get shipped out of the factory. Let's get out of here. Okay, okay, good. Gee, mister, that place was scary. Right you are, Crimbethy. Acoon is a horrible place. Nobody should go there. And even though it is the home of Q, most QAnon believers never do visit. By far the vast majority of the Q movement get their delicious Q sausage, not from the factory, but repackaged by Q influencers, collecting their favorite theories from the Acoon bakers into digestible YouTube videos, social media posts, and your standard conspiracy websites. Okay, but I don't think my mom would go to any conspiracy websites like YouTube. She's not a total sicko, and I never heard her talking about anyone named Q. Well, that's the terrible thing, Bobbingtons. QAnon's tendrils reach far, and the normification of QAnon means that many of its core ideas are able to spread on conservative Facebook pages, yoga websites, psychedelic discussion boards, mommy blogs, and all manner of Instagram pages with massive followings without ever mentioning QAnon or 8Coon. Wow, so Q was the one who told my mom about... Hillary Clinton's kids skin mask video? So so who is QAnon, and, and what do they say? Well, that's a good question. One that we should answer as one person who is not wearing a costume. It's it's too hot. It's too hot for this. It's it's much too hot. I uh I can't do I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't it's do not this. So bad for me. T shirt's pretty cool. The origins of QAnon. Okay, I'm done with that bit. No more bits. Okay, it's too silly. All right, there's some serious stuff coming up. I, I, I don't want to just be doing my theater kid uh, stuff here. Uh, let's let's get into Q's early days, as informed by the excellent Twitter threads of the Q Origins Project. Now, first, what does the name QAnon even refer to? Well, first, there's Anon. For a lot of people, the rise of the QAnon movement was probably the first time they'd heard that term, but that's just what everyone on 4chan calls each other. It's very weird for people who spent time on the chans to constantly hear a random piece of internet slang resurfacing on the news. Like, imagine constantly hearing about a massive fascist movement in six years that's called, that ain't it, chief. Uh, and the Q part refers to the highest level security clearance in the U.S. Department of Energy. And QAnon claims to be an individual with access to top secret energy stuff, I guess. I don't know. A uh, funny thing is, though, way before QAnon came on the scene, there were a ton of Anons who specifically claimed to be government insiders. There's FBI Anon, CIA Anon, NSA Sidekick, The Boy Wonder, CIA Intern, HLI Anon, which stands for High Level Insider Anon, 
all of whom make essentially the exact same claim as QAnon did, that they are a high-level insider posting secret secrets on 4chan. And here's the other thing that is an original to QAnon. Basically, everything that Q revealed about those dang old liberal elite pedophiles. You see, long before Q hit the scene, the online far right had been talking about Hillary Clinton, George Soros, Obama, the Rothschilds, and the whole gang being secret evil satanic pedophiles. They had already been talking about Robert Mueller secretly working for Donald Trump. And they were already talking about military tribunals for prominent Democrats being imminent. Now, most of these ideas aren't even original to 4chan or even the internet. These are old, in some cases, ancient Nazi ideas. And I'm not just saying Nazi because I'm a part of the wacky left who calls everyone I disagree with a Nazi, even though, yes, I do do that. Uh, but in this case, I am actually talking about literal swastika, Hitler, master race style Nazis who nowadays like to hang out on 4chan's poll board and talk about racist and anti-Semitic conspiracies. So you've, of course, got the classic where one day very soon, all the politicians you don't like are going to be arrested or publicly executed. Now, this is a retelling of the neo-Nazi concept of the day of the rope from the fascist sci-fi novel, The Turner Diaries. It refers to the day when politicians, journalists, women in relationships with non-white people will be publicly hanged. Now, The Day of the Rope itself is a reference to the Night of Broken Glass and the Night of the Long Knives, which were respectively when German Nazis uh, coordinated mass terrorism against the Jewish population in Germany and when they violently expelled leftists from the Nazi party and the nation in general. And the idea of children being sacrificed to elites because of magic power in their blood goes back even further, taken directly from an ancient anti-Semitic myth called blood libel, which was popular among racist Christians in medieval times, recycled into the Protocols of the Elders of Zion conspiracy, which was plagiarized from a piece of satire and passed off as fact by many European anti-Semites over the years, including, you guessed it, Hitler and the Nazis. So Q didn't invent these ideas. He literally just rolled up on a bunch of Nazis hanging out on the internet and told them exactly what they were already telling each other, but with a bit more theatrical flair. Now, sorry to disappoint you here, but Q is a hack, okay? Q is the Dane Cook of conspiracy theories. Just picture the other conspiracy anon sitting in the back of the room just super bitter about watching this young kid rise up, blow up, get all the success, just shaking their heads like, man, this guy's got nothing new to say. Eh? They're all just eating it up, though. Yeah, keep playing the hits, buddy. Man, I used to be hot shit once. Told him I was from the FBI. Now they're all losing it over this energy department, dude. What's going on? What happened? What happened to these Nazis? The change, man, the change. In fact, let's look a little bit closer into one of Q's contemporaries, Victory of the Light Anon. So Victory of the Light was an earlier Anon on 4chan's poll board with a very, very similar story to Q. Just like Q, VOTL told its followers of an evil cabal, using the word cabal, running the U.S. government in secret and promised them that the day would soon come when mass arrests of this cabal would happen and everyone would finally see them for who they really were. Uh, the OTL predicted mass bank closures for two weeks, just like Q's predicted 10 days of darkness. The OTL talked about liberating the world from the forces of darkness, and one of Q's slogans later became darkness to light. Now of all the other high-level insider Anons posting on 4chan's Nazi Hangout, Victory of the Light was the one Q most directly plagiarized. There were a couple details from Victory of the Light that Q decided to leave out. One was the very open anti-Semitism. Victory wasn't shy about saying Hitler did nothing wrong, for example, which made him popular on 4chan, but probably limited his broad appeal and potential to red pill non-Nazis. The other was the confident, clear assertion 
that aliens were real and were going to be involved. It's likely that Q watched Victory of the Light posting and thought to himself, oh, ooh, this guy's got something here. He can really make it big. If only he would shut up about how much more real aliens are than the Holocaust. Honestly, I mean, you know, that might play well to the Nazi crowd, but we are eventually trying to get the yoga moms in on this, too. Scalability. Scalability. q was for sure a better marketer than uh, VOTO. But as q grew, left 4chan for the open pastures of 8chan and 8 Coon, they were careful not to lean too far into their anti-Semitic roots, and usually stayed away from mentioning things like aliens or clones. At the same time, QAnon has been called a big tent conspiracy, very welcoming to all other conspiracy theorists. If you're a 9-11 truther, JFK assassination guy, if you're an Illuminati specialist, flat earther, anti-vaxxer, there is a spot for you in the QAnon world. It's the most polytheistic conspiracy theory out there, and that is a key reason why it was able to grow so huge. What QAnon gets right. Okay, all right, don't freak out, hang on, go with me here. So what is QAnon right about? Specifically, fucking nothing at all. But generally speaking, very little. The core of QAnon's worldview are the conspiracy theories that were already popular on 4chan's poll board when Q started, which I want to stress again, are nothing but fascist gibberish. So it's just a bunch of racists trying to manifest their dreams into reality by just believing in them really, really hard. But racist myths are not Tinkerbell, and they stay bullshit no matter how many people close their eyes and wish and wish and wish they were true. Now, I do want to acknowledge the germ of truth that tends to give the rest of the QAnon movement much more credit than it deserves. So there are, actually, in real life, quite a lot of very powerful people who are, number one, evil, and number two, pedophiles. Now, one of the worst reactions people have when they hear about QAnon, or even worse, when they're confronting a Q believer, is to say, how can people believe that we're ruled by evil, billionaire, satanic pedophiles? Because the thing is, we kind of are. I mean, except for the Satanist part. It tends to be pretty difficult for Satanists to get elected in America. But the part about Satanist side, we are ruled by a surprising number of rich child molesters and predators. People arguing against Q stuff really shouldn't act like it's ridiculous to suspect a politician of engaging in underage sex. Come on now, don't be ridiculous. He can't be a pedophile. He's a politician. He's not the front man of a pop punk band. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> now, more people should probably be aware of the entire Jeffrey Epstein saga. Seeing as it's probably the biggest news story of my lifetime, it's a little bit suspicious that it didn't get reported on more. Real quick, Epstein, a billionaire, set up wealthy and powerful people with underage women to rape in his American mansions and his tropical island, creatively named Pedophile Island. A little bit on the nose there, Mr. Epstein. So Epstein was caught doing this. 34 confirmed minors were on record with horrific stories of abuse, including corroborating details. One particularly gross story involved Epstein flying in 12-year-old triplets from France on his birthday. Uh, so when all this came to light, it was the end of the line for Epstein. He was going straight to pedophile jail, which is the worst jail. Or... No, actually, that's that's not what happened. Uh, Florida State Attorney and future U.S. Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta let Jeffrey Epstein off with a slap on the wrist. He acquiesced to every single demand Epstein's lawyers had. Epstein was only sentenced to one year in jail. And while he was in jail, this is a little bit unorthodox, he was allowed to leave jail for 12 hours a day. When he left jail for the day, he was allowed to get on a plane and fly somewhere. They, they didn't bother asking him where. Later, Acosta said the reason he gave such an obvious monster a sweetheart of a deal was that, quote, I was told he was intelligence. I know this makes me sound like a conspiracy theorist, so 
please look that quote up. You don't have to go on the dark web. You can find it on fucking Vox. Someone high up in the government somewhere was protecting this literal elite pedophile. This is a fact, not a conspiracy. Unless you define conspiracy as a secret plot or plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful, in which case, yes, it is a conspiracy. That is the correct word to use here. Bill Clinton has claimed he never set foot on the island, and he only rode the Lolita Express four times. Oh, right. Uh, did I mention that Epstein's plane was called the Lolita Express? Guess he was a, just a big fan of Vladimir Nabokov. Uh, weird thing, though, is that Bill said he only wrote it four times, why would he be on the logs 26 times? Epstein also always marked down Bill's full first and last name, even when the other passengers were just initials. Uh, you know, he liked having a famous friend. Now, Clinton has also been placed on the island by Epstein's maintenance guy, who said, I saw Bill Clinton sitting with Jeffrey on the living room porch area, which was Jeffrey's favorite spot. He's also been photographed getting a massage in an airport in Portugal by one of Epstein's victims. Now, of course, none of this is actually incriminating evidence, but you have to ask yourself, why would he lie about this unless he had something to hide? I'm sorry, but personally, I think it is next to impossible that Bill Clinton is not a rapist and a pedophile. Aside from Bill, Epstein's clients included British royalty like Prince Andrew, former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak, professional evil villain Alan Dershowitz, all with direct accusations. And on the flight logs of the Lolita Express, there's Tony Blair, Lawrence Krauss, Steven Pinker, Bill Gates, Kevin Spacey, Matt Groening, uh, Chris Tucker, Larry Summers, Ron Burkle, Casey Wasserman, etc. Damn! Etc. too, I always liked him. There's not a lot of Latin phrases you can still trust these days. In Vino Veritas is my problematic fave. Now, Big question here, are they all pedophiles? I don't know. I would guess at least some of them are. Maybe all, or most of them. I certainly wouldn't hire Bill Gates to babysit my kids, no matter how much he needs $10 an hour, help yourself to whatever's in the fridge. QAnon loves to talk about Epstein. And they're usually actually wrong about the stuff they post, like this photo, which Q said was of Bill and one of Epstein's victims on the Lolita Express. It wasn't. It's just Bill with a non-Epstein-affiliated woman on a non-Epstein-affiliated plane. So even when they're right, QAnon is still wrong, ironically making it easier for actual pedophile elites to argue that all the allegations against them are fringe conspiracy theories. So here comes the twist. Unfortunately, a lot of Democrats are secret pedophiles or predators or just evil, corrupt people. But good news. So are a lot of Republicans. Yes, the Republican Party has plenty of notable members who don't seem to care much about the age of consent, and I'm not just talking about the Libertarians. Matt Gates, currently being faced with some pretty damning accusations of trafficking underage women. I would say quite a bit more damning than any evidence that Tom Hanks knows where the bones are buried, for example. And yet, the response from the Q crowd has been surprising in that they really don't believe he is a pedophile. It's a real-life pedophile ring run by rich politicians, just like Q's been saying, but the Q followers refuse to believe it because Matt Gates likes Trump so much. And, of course, there's the main guy of QAnon, Trump. Okay, according to QAnon, Trump, as a personality trait, hates pedophiles. Like, even more than the usual normal amount people hate pedophiles, which is kind of weird, right? Because Trump is also a true Hall of Fame creep for the ages, a genuinely bad orange man. Trump has been accused of sexual assault by at least 25 women. One of them was 13 years old, and the alleged incident in occurred at a Jeffrey Epstein party. Oh yeah, yeah, Trump used to love hanging out with Epstein, like a lot. Trump once said, I've known Jeff for 15 years, Terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. And he's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. Oh, man. Listen, I never really nailed the Trump impression, but uh, that was not a fun quote to read, uh, even with a silly voice. It's just a gross thing to say about a famous pedophile <laughs> for a guy who's supposed to hate pedophiles. Why do you think it was that Trump never once brought up Bill Clinton's trips with Epstein during the 2016 election? You know he would have. 
It's because he's on the flight logs too. Honestly, I don't want to spend all the time talking about pedophilia and sexual assault. It's gross. It's a bummer. It's also a very real problem and a central reason for QAnon's popularity. It works for recruiting just about every demographic. For the people on the periphery, they might not even know about Q, but they get sucked in by the Save the Children rallies and the Facebook pages that sprung up. Who could be against saving the children? And for the Fox News conservative types, part of the appeal is that, hey, you know how your daughter told you supporting Trump makes you a racist? Remember when communist Facebook took down your post about nuking all the Muslims? How about that time a kid took a video of you in a Trump shirt, scratching your butt and then smelling your hand and it went viral? Well, what if it turned out that actually you're not the evil racist one and all those people were hypocrites who support pedophiles? You win. You get to be the good guy. But let's be clear, QAnon has never actually saved any children. In fact, it's made it harder for actual child welfare groups to do their jobs and make the most of their resources. According to Daphne Young, Chief Communications Officer for Child Help, if you get people constantly crying about abuse day in and day out on social media that is not real, that is, everybody in Hollywood is part of a mass cabal drinking the blood of children, drinking from their adrenal glands to stay young, this madness drowns out a child asking for help, a parent that needs resources. If you have a hotline counselor who is taking time to speak to someone discussing a debunked conspiracy theory, there may be a child holding on the next line. So while Q is entirely wrong about the specifics, and in fact actively makes children less safe, they are tapping into a fear of a real and genuinely upsetting phenomenon. Rich, powerful, elite pedophiles. They're not Satanists, though. This story is weird enough. It would be completely ridiculous to imagine an unfathomably powerful ancient religion secretly coordinating the abuse of children around the world. At least that's not happening. Who is QAnon? At the center of the Q phenomenon is an enigmatic mystery puzzle. Just who is this Q? And are they who they claim to be? Someone high up in the energy department coordinating an eventual fascist takeover with Trump? Will we ever find out who the real person or people behind the QAnon movement are? Eh, probably. I can't prove anything right now, but it seems pretty obvious to me that the guys controlling the Q account at the moment are the father and son duo Jim and Ron Watkins. The Watkins are the uh, owner and one-time site administrator of 8chan and 8coon, where Q did most of his posting. Originally on 4chan, it was probably a South African guy named Paul Ferber and a few others who worked to bring it to prominence before having the Q account stolen from them by Jim and Ron. That's right. The Q account was probably covertly stolen at some point. What a tangled web. To paraphrase a classic 4chan meme, Yo dog, I heard you like conspiracies, so I put a conspiracy inside your conspiracy so you can theorize while you theorize. For the purposes of this video essay, it doesn't really matter who did the posting, but I highly recommend the HBO documentary Q Into the Storm and the podcast Q Clearance for more background on the evidence and the speculation behind these allegations. Let's say, though, that you don't buy all that and you're still entertaining the possibility that Q is exactly who they claim to be. I think the biggest proof for me against this is just the character of 8chan itself, where Q, at the very least, chose to make their home. Even if Q isn't the, the people controlling the board, Q chose to go there. Now, 8chan was made to be a free speech alternative to 4chan, which apparently some people consider too censored. So 4chan, a website popular with Nazis, and certainly not what I would call completely unfriendly to pedophiles, an image board with memes making casual reference to dialogue from actual child pornography, is to some an example of cancel culture and the woke mob gone out of control. So 8chan was even worse, okay? 8chan.co made 4chan.org look like Tumblr.com. 8chan had several boards devoted to pedophiles. Some were just for pedophiles to anonymously swap stories, advice for not getting caught, grooming techniques, not talking about personal hygiene here. Uh, some boards were places where pedophiles could post images of children and toddlers posed provocatively in bathing suits, basically 
as close uh, as an image can get to child porn without being illegal. So it didn't stop 8chan users from linking to more hardcore child pornography hosted off the main site. Seems like a bit of a weird place for a queue to set up shop, right? We're going to form a cult to protect children from pedophiles. Now our meeting place is going to be the International Pedophile Club. While you're here, please feel free to browse this complimentary child pornography. Imagine the early days of QAnon on 8chan, the message board filled with perverts from all over the world getting outraged about billionaire perverts. This wasn't a save the children movement. This was more like pedophile class consciousness. This was child molester Occupy Wall Street. Looking back, it's kind of wild how long 8chan and 8coon allowed things like this to be posted on their website. In April of 2020, Ron Watkins finally banned all drawn child porn from the website probably due to complaints from Q followers who are coming to the site and generating the majority of its traffic. You can see a lot of the porn boards warning their users not to post that type of content anymore after this ruling. Let's return to Jim Watkins, the man who probably is Q in my opinion nobody can sue me. Jim has made most of his living hosting porn sites online and a lot of them appear to be child porn sites. From an investigation by Mother Jones, the domain's names include terms such as preteen, schoolgirl, and child alongside graphic terms for genitalia and words like rape and love. An analysis of metadata collected years ago from one by archive.org shows dozens of file names and links containing highly suggestive terms including XXX preteen, children, and sexual references to girls aged 12 to 15. Believe me, it's not lost on me how fucking depressing it is that the best argument against the far-reaching accusations of pedophilia from the QAnon crowd is to point out how many more pedophiles there are within the movement. It's not a fun argument to make. The whole, oh yeah, well you guys are pedophiles too. It's, it's just in my view the most convincing argument if we're just talking about whether we should believe Q is who they claim to be. How to get your loved ones out of the Q hole. It is extremely difficult and borderline impossible to perform the Heimlich maneuver on someone who's just taken the Q pill. It enters the bloodstream so fast. QAnon has been compared to a cult, and I think that's in many ways an accurate way to think about it, even if you take as a given that Q is a government insider spilling secrets online. Some of these secrets could ostensibly be insider intelligence, but many of them amount to prophecies that no insider would have access to without magic. And you could describe Q followers' viewpoint on Donald Trump as deification, if you were trying to be completely accurate. Have you ever tried to convince someone that their religion was wrong with facts and logic? I know I have as a former edgy teen atheist, current edgy adult atheist, it's, it's pretty difficult. People tend to dig in further to their beliefs when they're aggressively confronted about them. No matter how many times you drop the irrefutable logic bomb, Magic Sky Fairy. Side note, why don't people like hanging out with me? It might be difficult for most liberals to reason with Q-pilled family members when they might not know as much about, say, Jeffrey Epstein as the average Q-believer does. Now, there's no need to defend the Democratic Party or Bill Clinton or billionaires or act like there are no people misusing their political and economic power to exploit children. Stopping pedophiles is extremely important to most Q people, so it's not going to lead anywhere when they go with an approach that amounts to, there's no such things as pedophiles. I, <clears throat> I obviously, I, I can't guarantee any results at all, but in my opinion, the best approach might be the one known as street epistemology, originally pioneered as a non-confrontational way for atheists to speak to religious people and actually encourage them to question their own beliefs. So ask your Q-pilled loved one about their beliefs. Ask them follow-up questions about those beliefs. QAnon tends to sound more ridiculous the further away you get from the core messages, so keep asking for explanations. A few questions can turn the election was rigged into the less reasonable Joe Biden is dead, the man you see on TV is a hologram. Now, you might not achieve anything in one conversation, but most people never think of their beliefs in this way. And the person you're talking to 
may have never said these things out loud to another person. Hopefully, you might sow the seed that grows into them questioning the Q narrative. Above all, you want to stay approachable to them, if possible, so that they feel good about coming to you, when they want help out of the rabbit hole, when people feel that they have nobody outside of their cult to talk to, they tend to go deeper into the cult. So be their link to reality, if you can. It's going to be incredibly hard, but it just might be worth it. There was a recent study of online chatter regarding the QAnon movement by the Digital Forensic Research Lab. It searched several popular social media websites, a few of the free speech alternatives for 13 common Q sayings. WWG1, WGA, where we go when we go all, the storm, great awakening, trust the plan, uh, dark to light, future proves pass, uh, disinformation is necessary, the military is the only way, we are the news, save the children, Pizzagate, Seth Rich, and there's Q and there's a not. And what it found was that the use of these slogans was way, way down. Now, that might be what you'd expect, since Biden was elected, the cabal wasn't executed, and most important of Q's predictions seem to have been very publicly proven false. Some of that is definitely owing to QAnon posts being banned on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I guess some of that is also likely because Q hasn't posted since December. Q's last post was an incredibly sad YouTube link to a clip show of Trump rallies set to Twisted Sisters, We're Not Gonna Take It. Q went from revealing great truths to sharing cope videos he found on some boomer's Facebook page. This study is encouraging because it appears to suggest that people are losing faith in Q, which is great. Because as I've discussed, I don't like Q and personally think fewer people should be followers of Q. But don't worry. We're we're not going to end on an uplifting note here. There is another study by the Public Religion Research Institute that I find incredibly depressing. It polled Americans all across the political spectrum, asking them questions about three core Q beliefs, but without specifically mentioning Q at all. Participants were asked if they believe the government, media, and financial worlds in the U.S. are controlled by a group of Satan-worshipping pedophiles who run a global child sex trafficking operation. 15% of Americans overall and 23% of Republicans apparently are on board with this. And then there's the statement, there is a storm coming soon that will sweep away the elites in power and restore the rightful leaders, which got 20% overall support and 28% from Republicans. And for anyone who forgot about January 6th, the statement, because things have gotten so far off track, true American patriots may have to resort to violence in order to save our country, has 15% overall approval and 28% among Republicans. Now, many QAnon influencers are finding it more and more difficult to continue monetizing Q-related content. One of the biggest at the moment, Ghost Ezra, has pivoted hard into blatant anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. It would have been hard to imagine a successful Nazi propagandist at his scale a few years ago, but QAnon paved the way for it to flourish. QAnon may be crumbling, but its legacy remains. Your yoga teacher was never going to read the Turner Diaries, but now they believe with all their heart that the day of the rope is coming soon. Your uncle does not know any Nazis in real life, but now he believes significantly more of aspects of the protocols of the elders of Zion than he did this time four years ago. Maybe not your uncle in particular, but statistically uncles are highly susceptible to QAnon shit. Please check in on your uncles. We've had Pandora's box wide open for years. It's good that it's closing now, but we still have to clean the little shit particles off our toothbrush. QAnon? More like pooanon. Anyway, I hope you learned a lot from this video.